Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this uh, foliage tutorial in 3ds Max. Um, we're going to be working on a tree in this tutorial, um, like I've mentioned. And this is like an example of what you probably will end up with. Uh, something similar to this in your own um, uh, tree production. Um, you can see I've got a couple of different stages here. This is sort of near complete where you can see all the kind of branches and the uh, alpha mapped um, planes and things like that as well as the tree trunk itself which is just here. So I'm going to um, jump straight into it so we can start the process. So I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to create a cylinder. Now it's important when you create this that we sort of get the right height. Um, so what I tend to do is I always create a plane first and I'm going to bring in <clears throat> this image of a tree now it's fairly flat on from the side so it's going to be a good example there just to give me a guide as to how tall I need to make it and also um, later, later on it's going to help me to shape it as well just to kind of match this up as closely as possible okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this plane uh, the, the same resolution in terms of the width and the uh, length as the uh, image just there so if you go onto our tree file uh, it's this one just here I'm going to go into properties and I'm just going to check uh, so it's 1677 by 1145 1677 by 1145 <clears throat> so I know that's huge but I can scale it down later I just wanted to ensure that I had the right shape that it wasn't going to stretch the image uh, or squish it in any way <clears throat> and I'm going to press M to go into the material editor and then I'm going to go down and uh, drag in my texture file into that material just like that I'm going to then apply so you can drag that onto the surface like that what I tend to do just to clean things up a little bit is I go over to my modify tab and I uh, reduce the length segments down from four to one on each side only because it kind of cleans it up a bit we don't want loads of edges sort of getting in the way okay so that's our guide I'm just going to shrink that down now probably to the size of the grid roughly uh, and I'm going to lift that up once again just so the base is kind of in line with the uh, base of the grid I'm then going to go into my front view and my um, left view as well so sh change it to shaded from wireframe um, you can just press F3 and it should take it into realistic but I always like to go into shaded because uh, realistic can cast annoying shadows onto the uh, surfaces of the models so I'm going to leave it like that for now next I'm going to create my cylinder I'm going to go over into my perspective view <clears throat> I'm going to simply click and drag so I kind of get roughly the right kind of width on that I'm going to drag it up now don't forget this is going to bend quite a bit so if you have a look at the reference um, we have this kind of curvature I'm actually going to use this um, bend just here as the base uh, tree trunk and then I'm going to pull this one out later or create a new branch to form that shape just there so I'm going to click and drag that's a little bit too thick so let's just make sure we get uh, the right kind of width here <clears throat> that's that's a lot better I'm gonna go quite tall now because this is this is actually gonna bend I actually need to make it a little bit taller I can't make it the same height because once I bend it it's gonna become shorter so I'm gonna go probably right to about here and then once I bend it it's gonna give me um, enough height there to actually bend it and create that that shape so I'm gonna go to about there and then uh, important thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the sides down to 12 Simply because I want to work with a little bit uh, lower poly. Um, if you're new to modeling or especially this model of a tree, then you don't want to be doing it too high poly because it does get more tricky the higher polys you, you, you actually have. So then I'm going to be changing the height segments up to about 14 possibly. Um, so it gives me enough to kind of shape this nicely around here. I'm going to keep it on 14 just because we're going to stick fairly low poly. I don't want to go too high right now. Okay, so now we're going to be going into the modify tab and we're going to be converting this uh, cylinder to a editable poly. So we're going to click on edit editable poly. Um, once you're in here, we're going to be going over to um, the polygon selection so that's number four on the keyboard we're gonna we're gonna actually get rid of the base polygon we're gonna remove it press delete on it um, because if it's gonna be a tree going into the ground you're not gonna see the poly on the base just there <clears throat> uh, one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to go to um, vertex and in my view just here I'm just going to select like a few of these and I'm gonna pull them down a little bit now the reason being is because I want a tighter grouping of vertices or edges down the bottom of my tree uh, trunk because then it can I can sort of shape this a little bit better to make it look more natural and organic 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select now like the next row just a little bit um, and then just drag that down just a touch. Okay, we're not going to crush them too much too close together but just so they're you know a little bit closer. If you find that there's a little bit too big a gap in certain areas you can just sort of pull those bits down as well. I'm going to drag this down a little bit more and maybe drag some of these down just a touch. Now the reason being is because at the top it's not as curved and again you're not going to see that as closely in a game as you would the base. Um, so you want to make sure that the base is actually um, the better detailed um, part of your tree so I'm just going to pull some of these down like so so that should be now much much better um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, come out of vertex and I'm going to straight away go into the unwrap modifier so I'm going to go ahead go to the modifier list like so and go down to unwrap UVW and then I'm going to go on to the open UV editor. So within this, we're going to see um, like all the sides laid out pretty nicely, actually. And then you've got this circle here, um, which is uh, the top of the cylinder as well. So I'm going to go ahead to polygon. I'm going to select the top poly and I'm going to drag that out the way like so. <clears throat> what I'm left with is the rest of this object, which is obviously like so. Now, what we need to do is ensure that this texture is not going to be stretched when we apply it. So the easy way to do that is if you just click on the checker pattern drop down and then click on to check a pattern again. If I zoom in, that's going to obviously, um, as you can see, the checkers aren't square. So it shows us that the texture would be squished or stretched um, because this checker pattern needs to form be formed of squares right and not rectangles like this okay so what we're going to be doing now is we need to obviously ensure that, that the checkers are square so what you do is you go up to your uh, tools and you go to relax again making sure that all the polys are selected so you can click and drag over the remaining area in your uh, UV space <clears throat> and then we're going to go in the drop down from uh, relax by edge angles to relax by polygon angles we're going to hit start relax and that's going to do its thing you can see how it's changed now you're going to hit apply and if you look on the model now those checkers are square perfect so that's actually what we, what we wanted that's the desired effect and it means that the texture is not going to be stretched next step is to simply go ahead and scale this down so when you scale this down i always recommend using the freeform tool if you hold control when you scale from the corner it will maintain the proportions Okay, so this top area here, I'm not going to be too concerned about simply because I'm going to be crushing that down anyway. I'm actually going to be merging all the verts on the very top or just scaling them down really tightly um, because, again, that's going to be the top of the tree. We're not really going to see that too much any or at all, in fact, in a game. Okay, so we're going to be making that really, really small. It doesn't really matter at all. We're going to drag that into the corner just like that um, and that pretty much is done what i might do is you know utilize my uh, unwrap space my uv space a little bit better by ensuring that i go a little closer to the edges but please don't go too close don't overlap it either you don't want to do that you want a little border around there okay so the reason why i've got such a uh, big gap just here is because i actually utilize this space to um bring in other tree trunks so if i was going to make an environment with a tree i wouldn't just use one tree and one texture for a tree trunk because then it would be very repetitive so what i tend to do is i leave this space so then i can utilize this space with different tree trunk textures and then i can obviously apply them to different trees and really sort of um you know form an environment which isn't all repetitive textures otherwise it's going to look like a boring environment okay so then what we're going to do is like i said we're going to go over to tools we're going to go down to render uv template so we're going to go ahead and change the resolution to 2048 by 2048 i'm going to render uv template now if it looks a little bit odd like this then it's because it's zoomed out so don't worry nothing's gone wrong uh, we're going to save this image out so i'm going to stick it in uh, my project folder I'm going to call this tree UV map. Let's make sure the space is in there. And then I'm going to hit .jpg um, to save it as a JPEG. Make sure the quality is set to 100 and then press OK. OK. Um, and that's now saved as an image. 
Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into Photoshop in the next uh, part of this tutorial where we're going to be applying the texture, we're going to be bringing that back and actually making this texture completely seamless on our tree trunk, okay, which is actually can be quite tricky, but I'm going to give you some tips um, to get it done as painlessly as possible and I'm pretty sure you're going to be very happy with the result. Okay, so thanks for watching this first part guys, I'll catch you in the next video.